and everything feels so real. I'm not saying the graphics are like photo real, you know, but they're pretty damn close. And it, it feels so real. The only thing that doesn't feel real is you can't feel the things you're holding in your hands, you know? But yeah. everything else, like the sight, the sound, 3D sound, and just looking around, it's crazy. It's so surreal. Dude. People are going to find virtual reality as a way to, to connect with other people, but also to escape from their own realities, right? So, um, so to some degree, creating you know, a personal reality that is located in another, you know, in the virtual world. And so we, we kind of see it nowadays, you know, with people being, being in, in, in their phones, right? Um, a couple of years ago, one of my friends had told me that a third of our life, we were going to spend it looking at a screen. And more and more, I start to see that to become true. You know, when we wake up, you know, one of the things that uh, a lot of people do is check their phone, check what notifications we have going, like who contacted me? Is there something I need to do? And, you know, already th then and there, we're looking at screens. And so VR is, is going to be another platform, I, I feel, you know, where the internet is going to connect with this new technology uh, to expand people's escapism. In, in yeah. It's like when the NES, the Nintendo, first Nintendo system came out, the graphics were, you know, not that great, right? I mean, I, still, I like it because it's classic, but when it first came out, it was basic, just like VR right now. It's in its kind of like beginning stages, but it's going to grow just like the Nintendo system grew into like Xbox 360 and Xbox One today. And I feel like VR is going to do the same thing and it's going to become more and more popular over the years to where everyone can just have it in their hand at all times. So have constant access to it like a phone kind of and you, can, you already kind of technically have that you can buy like these oculus things that you don't have to plug in i believe if i understand that correctly but i think it works with your phone or something so there's all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff uh and you're right you know like what if, what does that mean for the future does it mean that vr is gonna like is there gonna be people walking on the street with like vr helmets are the new google glasses thing to where yeah. there's like stuff in front of your eyes and, and and how much will that remove people from other people around them? That's the question. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I mean, just like social media, social media has made it possible to connect with other people in the world, right. To meet, you know, somebody in France that likes, you know, playing Xbox just like you, but you never would have met if, the internet didn't exist or social media didn't, didn't exist. So I think in, in many ways, it's going to expand the possibility to meet other people in various parts of the world. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the things, you know, the, the traditional things that, you know, talking to people, meeting people, that's, I think, going to evolve as well. And I right. think there's going to be so, some sort of culture clash between the younger generations and the older generations i mean we've seen it throughout time you know a lot of people you know thought the internet you know was 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 bad right and right. um yeah. you know and, and you can pull a lot of bad things from it but there's also some good to it and i think so there's going to be the same thing some good and some bad to all types of technology that arise from the future there can be that barrier uh, on depending too much on your virtual reality because you are creating your perfect self there. And, but in your real life, you know, living life, then you, you're maybe not the same person, right. Or you're, you're uh, not building up to, to the same status as your virtual reality. And so that can become some self, uh, some self-confidence issues to some degree. Yeah, definitely. So, and then you, I like what you mentioned about maybe people uh, not being as interactive because, you know, I pulled up this right here, some 2020 reports about loneliness in America. And it's saying, and you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but it shows that like younger generations are lonelier, lonelier than older generations, nearly eight and 10 Gen Zers, 79%. And seven in 10 millennials, which is 71%, are lonelier versus only half of boomers. 
So I think it's pretty fascinating. Um, and, it, and, and I wonder if technology does that, plays does a role. That like, is that how they feel that they feel lonely or? Yeah. Or and, and that's the thing What these self-report type deals. And I haven't looked into the background on it, so I'm not going to claim anything, but it could be that they might've done a self-report. Like, do you feel lonely? It looks like there's a scale on the top there that 79%, which is, I mean, that's basically almost 80% compared to yeah. 50% of previous generations. So the most recent generations are lonelier. And yeah, my question is, lonely. Is that because, you know, because of technology? Is it because of cell phones? Is it because of this or that? But then, you know, people, there's like a meme I saw where it had someone reading a book, someone on a cell phone, and then someone doing something else, even more futuristic. And basically the argument was like, well, people used to look in books all the time and people thought that would make people lonely. Now it's just cell phones. It just kind of, so I don't know. That's the question. Do you think it's, uh, is it mass hysteria? Are we trying to blame everything on the cell phone or does it actually make a valid point? Could the cell phone be making people more lonely because it's decreasing social skills and social interaction? And what do you think yeah. about that? Well, um, you know, I think it really comes to where are people spending their attention, right? And I think more and more, the younger generations are spending more time online, you know, without other than being with people, right? You know, they are with people virtually, but they're not with people physically, right? right? And so I think their attention is it drawing more to finding groups of people online that match who you are. You could argue it in both sides, to be honest, you know, that there is a lot of people online and you can find people. And so there's no reason to feel lonely. But at the same oh. time, I think, in terms of social skills, I think a lot of people are just like defaulting to just texting or, you know, not even communicating as we used to communicate before. And so there's a lot of things uh, communication wise that I feel are definitely being lost. It almost seems like in that sense, we'd be less lonely, but I know me and you have studied in our communication studies degrees and classes that social interaction through text is a lot different than in person 